Prosecution, you may now call your first witness, Bailiff Pena. And the prosecution would like to call for first witness, James Trusco Adams. So first off, I'd like to start by uh, asking you what is it that makes you credible to the, even have a say in what the American dream is since it's such a, it can vary from different opinions what the American dream is. So what is it that we can, what is it that you offer that can make us trust you? Well, um, before I started writing and became a credible historian, I did 12 years. Um, uh, I was a businessman for 12 years um, before I wrote two of my books, which were bestsellers, and that, that um, established me as a credible historian. And then after that, um, I, won I also won a Pulitzer Prize for History for my founding, the founding of New England. And I, um, I probably also know me a lot from my epic of the Epic of America, where I established the concept of the American dream. Jason, you want to say? Can you all hear? Okay. You sure? It's just because I'm old. <laughs> okay. Okay. So in your book, the concept of America, I mean the uh, Epic of America, what is it that? Uh, What's the main quote that you say that defines the, the American dream? You would like me to read this? Yes. <laughs> the quote from your book you wrote in the Epic of America. The American dream is that is the is that dream of a land in which life should be better and richer and fuller for everyone with opportunity for each according to ability or achievement it is a dif it is a difficult dream for the european upper class to interpret adequately and too many of us ourselves have grown weary and mistrustful of it it is not a dream of motor cars and high wages merely but a dream of social order in which man and each when each man and each woman woman shall be able to attain to the fullest stature of which they are innately capable and be recognized by others for what they are, regardless of their fortuitous, fortuitous circumstances of birth or position. So can you explain a little bit more about what the main idea is behind the American dream? The idea of my American dream was that each man and each woman in America should be able to obtain what they, um, a richer and fuller life, and as I said, that doesn't mean that you have you are you become wealthy or you are, you know, fast cars and high wages. It means that what you are capable of, you should be able to obtain. Meaning that if you are born within um, an unwealthy situation, if your family is unwealthy and you're not able to obtain a master's degree as someone else would, that comes from a wealthy family, then that's that doesn't make that doesn't make um, the two equal, and that's because, of, and that would be because of birth circumstances, which is the opposite of my American dream, where I believe that they should have the same equal rights, other like not counting their birth circumstances, which was well. So, could you please describe how to us how the American dream applies um, to your views on education, specifically on college, uh, higher education? Um, nowadays, college degrees are very um, valuable, and having a master's in something or having a bachelor's in something is um, something that you could get hired for. It's a make or break in the job industry. So it's a standard. Like yes. That's what you need to get. Budget. Usually, yes. And um, when you cut funding for community colleges, which most people are having to go to since they don't have enough money to go to universities, um, you're taking away their um, opportunities which some people might have when they go to university and they might not have when going to community college because as you said, there's been a lot of funding being cut and so they're not getting the sufficient education as they would if they were wealthy, which usually is a birth circumstance. So you're saying that that is, uh, like in quotes in your book, um, that is 
holding them back from people, men and women, to attain the fullest stature which they are innately capable. Yes. Right. Um, so, would you say that uh, America, so the American dream is being destroyed? I believe that the American dream is not being, is not, is not allowing, is not being obtainable because of the different um, things that are like happening, not only in colleges, but also when you're, um, when children are in high school, if they're not being prepared enough for college, then their dreams are being um, cut, destroyed. Okay. So you got, you received a prize, the Pulitzer Prize in 1922. So back then, what type of education did you need to get a job to support a family or support yourself comfortably? Um, education was not as valuable as it is now. And um, I did actually go to business school and I was not um, trained to be a uh, journalist. But now, um, if someone were to come out of a business school and say they want to be a journalist, it's not. Um, people might say, "Well, you need to have a journal, like a journalism degree or a writing." So that would you need to go to a university for that? Yes, usually, and um, but I did not have to because I was around during 1800. Okay, so back then, college wasn't as. It was valuable. It was valuable, but it wasn't a requirement to be able to sustain yourself. Yeah. So even if you couldn't afford it, you'd still be able to live. And, uh, you can now. You can still live. You no, know, live, but uh, live a fuller <laughs> life and uh, be able to, you know, live comfortably. Yeah. But usually now it is a really a high advantage if you have a degree, especially. The prosecution has no question. Do you guys want to, this defense, do you want to cross the Yes. Um, please restate your name. James Chuslow Adams. Okay. And your occupation? Oh, I'm a writer, historian. And Mr. Adams, what time did you live around? What time period? Um, uh, late 1800s and early 1900s. Mid, I was born in the mid 1800s. And what works do you find yourself most, most successful for? The history of America and, New and England. Okay. Um, do any of these works exemplify your position on the American dream? Like, like, do they show what your position is on the American dream? Yes. And how so? Well, in the epic of America, I state the American dream and what my views are. Okay. And what would you consider your position on the American dream for modern times now? Well, I believe that each person should be given equal rights and equal advantage, even though some may be born into wealthy circumstances and some may be born into unwealthy circumstances. And how do you feel this plays a role in California's access to higher education? Well, um, many universities, um, it's easier for a student. Private university is usually easier for a student because there are a lot of uh, there's usually a lot of people around them, like, I guess I should say, there's more help with, with their education, I guess, that um, they're more, uh, they're wanted to succeed from that because they're in a private university that where more people are pushing them to, where in a community college, most people would look um, maybe down upon that and say, well, why weren't you accepted into a university? Why aren't you at a university? Are you at a community a college? A private university or universities in general? In general, sorry. Um, so you feel that there is more of an obligation to make your way to a university rather than a community college? No, I believe that um, if, you are, if you are going to a community college, whether that's because you um, weren't accepted to a university or you don't have enough money for a university, you should still have sufficient education to be able to obtain the same type of degree. So what is your opinion on scholarships and financial aid? Um, many people do, and it's a great um, opportunity because um, when students are given a full ride to college, like it's great, obviously, but a lot of students aren't given those, which should deserve them, and so they're forced to go to community college, which some students did get the scholarships to the university, and they have to go to community college, and that's not bad. Community college isn't bad, but if you're not getting the same sufficient education as they would, as they would go into university, then you are um, taking away. 
What do you find are the biggest differences between community colleges and universities? Um, I don't know about the education now <laughs> um, too much, but um, I think that one of the biggest differences is that um, in private universities, there is more likely to be a, uh, I guess, um, smaller uh, student to teacher ratio as there might be like, you know, 25 to one teacher, where in community college, usually there are a lot more students, and so there might be one teacher to however many, like 100 students in a large lecture hall. And so when, you're, when you give them that, the students usually, um, that takes away kind of, um, the relationship between a teacher or a student and it might withdraw them from their education a bit more and so it's kind of taking away the advantage that you would have. Do you have evidence or does the prosecution have evidence to support this student to teacher ratio or teacher to student ratio? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, where did you live the majority of your life? Well, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and I then moved to uh, Illinois to do most of my How do you feel like you relate personally to this access to California or California's access to higher education? Um, well, since they're using my American dream to define how um, if it's giving if it's Amer if California is giving sufficient education, um, I feel I relate that way because I developed the concept. Um, what personal expertise led you to that opinion of relating your American idea of the American dream to colleges that you are not in the same time period as or location? Uh, well, I well again, they're they're using my American the American dream as a way to define if it's sufficient education if it's giving the. California sufficient education and so that's how I would connect myself with this. So do you find that a phrase or a quote for, of the American dream from say the 1900s, early 1900s is going to relate to colleges in a modern economy? Yes because this is still America and this is still the land where everyone should be given an equal opportunity. So should I be able to compare your access to education with mine? Just because of the time period difference or modern education access? Yes, I still think you should. So I can relate how easy it was to access education for you. It should just be that easy now, even depending on the economy, how it's changed? No, because um, as I said, like you don't ha I mean, you don't have to be giving like everyone scholarships. Not everyone has to go to a university, but if you're going to be putting them in community colleges, they should still be getting the sufficient education, which is a given because in America, we want equality. That's what we're for. So, do you think so do you think that because the accessibility to your colleges have changed over time, do you think that your quote about the American dream has changed as well? No, I don't believe it has changed. Okay. So, um, all right, thank you. Prosecution, would you like to re-examine your witness? Yes, So the defense just asks you if you are able to compare the American dream back then and how it is now, or actually the access to education, how it was a lot easier back then. Um, do you think that when you consider the amount of students um, applying for all of these colleges, these uh, universities, in compared, California. yeah, in California, compared to the amount of uh, community colleges, do you would you say that that would be a a good comparison to make if there are less amount of uh, universities to the amount of community colleges? Would you say that it's fair to compare the accessibility? When you go, uh, to one, one to the other. Objection. Please your state. Would you okay, say so that it is... Are you going to... Hold on. Are you going to... Oh. Yeah. That's... Okay. Please your state is not an objection. Oh, you can object sorry. that it's ambiguous or misleading. Uh, ambiguous, yeah. Are you going to overrule or sustain that? I'm going to sustain. So <laughs> do you want... Okay. So do you want them to strike that question or do you want them to restate the question? Restate it. Okay. Tell them what to do. <laughs> what, do you think it would be fair to compare the amount of... You know, 
universities to the community colleges and compare how they, each of them are accessible, like amount of students who can get into each, uh, each one, like community colleges and universities, is it to the ratio to students and the amount of schools, would it be fair to compare how many people can actually get in? Um, well, in community college, to my knowledge, um, <laughs> uh, you are, if you're part of that community, you're already, it's already a given that you're able to go to your community college. But in universities, um, also to my knowledge, um, you must be accepted, usually. And um, also, if you are accepted, usually a tuition will come along, whereas, uh, which is much larger than college. That's so it's easier to get in to a Objection. community college. Is that what you're saying? Objection. Um, bad <laughs> <laughs> Is that not a clarifying question? Uh, overruled. So are you saying that it is easier to get into a community college? Okay. Thank you. Prosecution, are you done with your witness? Yes. Witnesses excused. Prosecution, please bring up your next witness. Prosecution would like to call your second witness, uh, Thomas Friedman. Oh, I'm sorry. Stand Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you, Randy? So help you, Randy. <laughs> So, Thomas Friedman, uh, can you tell us about your background in education? Well, I first attended University of Minnesota and then transferred two years later to Brandeis University where I obtained, obtained a degree in um, Mediterranean <laughs> studies and then I went through a couple more colleges like St. Anthony's and ended up in Oxford where I obtained, obtained my master's degree at uh, Mediterranean. So and that's, that's where loud, guys, okay. I met my wife, who was an economist, and I roomed with an economist. And I taught uh, economy uh, at Brandeis. So you majored in, what was that again? Mediterranean. So can you uh, elaborate real quick just what that is? Okay. Objection. Misleading? What does this have to do? Uh, overruled. Say, I would say Mediterranean studies. Is. Okay. So, what is your current occupation? I am a writer for the New York Times. I write two articles a week, usually around. You know. So, you. What is your experience in writing before you came to New York Times? Um. Before, well, how I got my job at the New York Times was in 19, the years have flown, 1979, I went to a Middle Eastern country, I think Somalia, and then, or something like that, <laughs> um, and then around 1981, I was offered a job to write articles while I was in there, and I wrote an article that received the Pulitzer Prize and it was about some revolution, and since then I've been making my way up uh, the evolutionary train on New York Times. Um, so what do you like to write about most in your articles today? Today I like to write about governmental policy, global policy, and I like to write about economics, and I found a new interest in relating all three into education. Okay, so since you are an expert in those, how do these affect or relate or connect in any way to education? Well, we'll start with uh, how like the government funds and stuff and you know we get like teacher cuts not just in America but in every other country and that affects the teacher ratio between student to teacher ratio which around in America is around 17.5 through 20, uh, 20 students per teacher. And in India, it's way higher when it's one teacher per 40 students. But like I said, um, uh, with budget cuts the, and teacher cuts and all that stuff between every other nation and country, it's 
going up, not down. Um, prosecution would like to present uh, part of evidence B to the witness. Don't bring the table. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so are you familiar with the per student spending in California? Um, okay. <laughs> uh, um, let me read. Um, 1,800 per student uh, on education each year. 1,800. Okay. 1,800. That's for California? Yes. New York spends. New York. So New York spends how much? 1800. 1800. How much does California spend? Uh, California is ranked 43rd with spending um, 8,667 per student, about 3,000 below national average. Okay. So, so how does that uh, relate to other countries and per student spending and the amount, the education that they receive? Well. First, the education, we, America, are pretty high up on the standards. We're ranked 25th, um, beating India and China and falling short from some European countries. But uh, the programs are different. So, like, in China, they have specific programs per, like, so let's say I'm a kindergarten kindergartner wanting to go into... Uh, politics, they would like help me throughout the years of my kindergarten years through 12th grade, 12, K through 12 years. And so I think that other countries, some countries have more like specific uh, programmings that you have to follow to become that education. So when you graduate, that's your only education that you can, uh, job that you can obtain. Well, America, you kind of have like those free choices in which some public schools, like, they give you those options. Yeah. So, are you saying that they lead the course, they lay the course out for you to be successful in other countries? Yes. Like India? Well, uh, in that specific uh, occupation, not overall. Okay. Um, so what do you know about community colleges? Community colleges? Well, when it comes to community colleges, Let's say, um, let's say like for graduates, uh, I know that the unemployment is around like a 6.6 .6 for graduating from a community college and that is due to, let's say you're running a business and you have two people, somebody who went to a four year, uh, let's say high education uh, university, like let's say UCLA or a uh, uh, community college, you're gonna wanna choose that UCLA over the person who went up to, uh, got that community college degree. So, what about unemployment? How has it increased? Unemployment? Uh, it is increased by, you, know, you get those, well first, a business will not want to hire somebody that they don't have to hire. So let's say there's 13 teachers or 13 students that teacher uh, they're at school is going to receive cuts because they don't need all 13 they want to they want to hire the basic minimum to run that company so they don't have to uh, waste more money or not waste money but spend money on so budget cuts occur from those and the cuts I mean not budget cuts the unemployment so as a highly regarded writer that you are what have you what are you familiar with uh, in education in California what opinions do you have on their, on how they're performing? Um, well, in California, um, I know that out of the six of the nine, there's a below 50% acceptance rate for the UC schools. And um, so on California, compared to the United States, what do you have to say on education? I know it's um, education. It's the UC systems are a model for um, the country because they're so their quality is good, but the acceptance rates and basically, and then it also comes in with in-state and out-of-state and how they basically accept all of the out-of-states, not all. That's an exaggeration, but a lot of the out-of-states over the in-state. So the California students 
of California are having a harder time than, let's say, students in New York, which... So why would you say that they accept more out-of-state students? Because the out-of-state students uh, for California, they pay on estimate around like 2300 more or they're so-so. So they're going to want the students that have to pay more in which you get benefits for being in-state. So they're, would you say that they're putting the students of California over for money for the other so out-of-state students? Yes, just like a business should. It's <laughs> like a business should. Okay, prosecution has no further questions. Defense, would you like to cross-examine? Please state your name. Thomas Rodman. Okay. And please your state your current occupation. I write for the New York Times. Can you speak louder, please? I write for the New York Times. Thank you. Okay. And when you were talking, you did receive a Pulitzer Prize, you said? Yes. Did, have you received a Pulitzer Prize? I received three. All right. And what were those four? The my uh, four? Yes. Oh, the first one was... Um, no, the first one was a long time ago, so it was a file. <laughs> Memory fades over the years. Uh, it was something when it comes to something. You don't know the answer. Yes, I do not know the answer, okay. but I've seen them. And you testified that one of your Pulitzer Prizes was because of, quote, some revolution. Do you wish it was to an article. It was, uh, I wrote an article on... Uh, not so long ago. It was like some, there's a revolution in the Civil War going on, and so I was, I was offered the job, and then I wrote about it, and that's how I received my prize. And how do you feel that your opinions relate to the prosecution's argument of California? How do I feel? May you restate that in a question understandably? How do you find <laughs> that, how do you find that your opinions, like shown in your writing, relate to the prosecution's argument? Prosecution arguments? Well, I write globally, so I know UC schools are ranked pretty high, but there's problems with the UC schools, so then they called me. Well, not problems, I mean, they're, they're ranked high, they have good quality. Is it correct that you testified that UC systems are a model for the country because their quality is so good? Yes. Um, earlier you testified that the unemployment for colleges is something like 6.6. .6. What were you talking about? Well, no, a four-year degree is a 4.1% unemployment rate. A two-year degree comes from 6.6. .6. Then a high school degree is 8.8, .8 and a dropout is 12. And does the prosecution have the evidence <coughs> with them? It was in one of my articles. Do we have that no, available bad. with us? No, but <coughs> do you guys have it online or online? Yeah, you said. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't have that evidence. It's in the discovery page. Yeah, we don't have it. Alright, thank you. Um Do you have evidence to explain why you earlier testified that UCLA, for example, would be always chosen over community college graduates? Uh evidence? Or if you want to elaborate. Well, elaborate, I can elaborate. Um, so let's say <laughs> you were running a business and you had to choose between two people, somebody who graduated from UCLA or somebody who graduated from, I don't know, some community college. As a businessman, I would prefer to choose the UCLA because I would feel they're more advanced for their... Okay. And have you written in your columns preceding this trial about arguments like this? Arguments about the About higher education. Yes. Would you like to share any of these arguments? Of a higher education? Or Things you've written about in the past that relate to this argument. Of higher ed education. Yes. Alright. Um, there was one article, I forget the date, but uh, I remember Can't say on the top of my head, but I packed there somewhere. Oh god. I don't know We don't know. I mean, we got time scheduled, so. Alright, I don't know that. <laughs> okay. How do you feel the economy has played a part in California's colleges? In 
California colleges. Well, the economy, there is a big unemployment rate, which I believe reached a 7.8 just recently, or 7.9. Um, the economy under, well, the economy. there's globally, like for the United States economy, like. How do you feel that this, yes, the, the overall the economy has played a part in California's college? Uh, I really don't know how the federal government has played a big part. No, not the federal government, well, just the economy as a whole. Of the economy as a whole, there's been cuts for teachers, like teachers been laid off, budget cuts. Um, there's big unemployment, uh, underemployment, so you might not be getting, you know, the best uh, professors in a way. Well, no, you, but yeah. And. <laughs> How do you feel like that ties into this idea of accessibility for higher education? Accessibility to a higher education? Well, you do have, like I said, you have great schools in California with UCLA, UC Berkeley, well not Berkeley, um, but when it comes to accessibility, I feel like I know UCLA and Berkeley have around a 20% acceptance rate to those schools, so uh, the accessibility you California isn't really providing the accessibility, but they're providing the quality. And for a variety of citizens throughout California who do wish to have different jobs not that don't require UC or CSUs, do you feel that community colleges are sufficient for these people? Um, I would, like I said, I would say no due to the underemployment. Um, you have those people who get their degrees in science, but they have no job, so they have to go to, let's say, 7-Eleven. But does, but does that unemployment rate rely on the accessibility to college or as the, on the economy as well? Does that unemployment rate have You're, accessibility? You, does, that, does the unemployment that you are talking about have to do with accessibility to higher education or the economy? The economy. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Do you feel like any of your works particularly relate to this trial significantly? Or? Not significantly. Okay. Do you feel that you relate personally to this trial? No. How would you define this idea of sufficient higher education? Sufficient higher education, how would I describe it? Um, well, sufficient, it's got to be there and ready, so, you know, the accessibility goes back to, so are they accepting, enrolling all those students and higher, which is the quality, so are those schools doing well? And I would say yes, the UC systems are high up there on the rankings for the United States colleges, but like I said before, their accessibility is a little tougher. And so how would you determine the insufficiency of higher education in cases like community colleges? Uh, they're pretty open. I mean, you accept, go to a community college because you can't get in, so they, their enrollment is good. Do you think that people always, in all cases, go to community colleges because they can't get into universities? No. How do you feel that financial aid, student loans, grants, etc., tie into this idea of accessibility? Of accessibility? You get a student loan, let's say you get a student loan for let's say a thousand dollars yet what people mistake is that you get that student loan for a thousand dollars that entire year so you have a thousand dollars to pay for your books which are over a thousand dollars you get all uh, classes and all that stuff so uh, and so yeah student loans are out there but are they helping unless you get a full ride scholarship not really what about not necessarily loans, but financial aid. Financial aid, yes, that too is out there. But, I mean, you still have to pay incredible amounts to a, go to a UC or another private uh, college. So, you, the, it's helping, but it's not really. Do you apply your opinions to all cases for citizens that are applying, that there's only minimal financially? 
um, financial aid. Well, I know there's been some cuts when it comes to financial aid, but no. Yeah, but I mean, like, do you think that in all cases the aid offered is only minimal, or do you think there are cases different? There's differs. Okay. All right. Thank you. Prosecution, would you like to re-question your witness? Dismissed. I think we should take a five-minute break. Sure. All right. Safe, everyone. Uh, court is now in recess. Yay! Court is now in session again. Please get to your seats and quiet down. Thank you. The prosecution, would you like to call your last witness? Yes, we'd like to call Hi. Hi. We swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you humanities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you please introduce yourself? My name is Alejandra Gularte, and I am currently the college advisor at High Tech High Media Arts. What education do you have? I am currently studying to get my doctorate in education, specializing in student affairs. Could you tell me the difference in degrees from community colleges versus uh, degrees in universities? At a community college, when you graduate, you graduate with an associate's degree versus at a university where you could graduate with a bachelor's or a master's degree. And sometimes um, an associate's degree can be deemed as less valuable in the workplace. Um, how are budget cuts being affected? I mean, how are budget cuts affecting community colleges? Well, since they have less money, they don't have enough money to have as many classes as they used to. So students are kind of having to go all over the county for their classes. Uh, for example, if they need one math class for their course, they have to go to a different community college and then a different one for another writing class. So it can kind of prolong graduation. Um, how are UC and CSU schools being affected by budget? They're having to rise their tuitions. Um, what is the TAG program? The TAG program is the Transfer Admissions Guarantee Program. And, oh, let me explain it first for them. Um, and basically what that means is that a student can go to community college for two years and then transfer to a UC or a CSU school. This is a really great program because students can save money. They only have to pay for two years of a UC school and they can still graduate from there. Um, why has the TAG program been cut? Funding. From, from the state, and um, UCSD recently just stated that they're not going to be accepting any more community college transfers, and it looks like the UC schools are going to be following suit. Okay. I'd like to present uh, Exhibit C, A to G requirements. Could you please read the A to G requirements off for me, please? Sure. History and social science, two years. English, four years. Math, three years. Four years recommended. Laboratory Science, two years. Language other than English, two years. Visual and Performing Arts, one year. College Preparatory Elective, one year. Thank you. Um, could you tell me why you need to meet those ADG requirements? You need to meet these ADG requirements in order to apply to a UC or a CSU school. Can you tell us the problem that has been occurring with ADG requirements? Well, at most public high schools, uh, students are allowed to pick and choose their classes. So what happens is they choose classes that they think will help them graduate uh, and go to college. And then at the end of those four years, they look back and they realize that they don't have the right amount of credits to apply to UC or a CSU school. It doesn't matter if they've done well or not, they can't even apply. Okay, uh, so you're telling me that students who have graduated and done well in their classes can't even apply to go to college? Yes, that's true. Um, I'd like to present Exhibit D, uh, it's, okay, it's the AG Implication Plan. Uh, could you please read the highlighted portion to me? Sure. According to SFUSD data, 31% of SFUSD graduates in 2008 met all the A to G requirements and many met most of them. That means that 69% of last year's graduates were not UC eligible. Can you just clarify what SFUSD is? San Francisco Unified School District. Is that high school, college, what is that? Uh, that's, uh, oh, or high school. Okay, um, 
So you're saying that 69% of San Francisco graduates can't even apply to college? Mm -hmm. Even if they've done well and excelled in their classes. Okay, uh, I guess that's all for right now. Oh, okay. Defense, would you like to cross the Yes. Okay. Can you state your name? Alejandro Goularte. Uh, what is your current occupation right now? Uh, college advisor at High Tech High Media Arts. You just stated that SFUSD has 69% students are not qualified, right? Mm -hmm. How does that fare to all the other communities? What do you like, mean? Is it a good example or good? How does it? Well, I know um, San Diego Unified School District only about, I think it was 40% in 2010 that um, passed the A to G requirements, so it's not really that big of a difference. What did you say 69% and 40% are very different? I know, I said 40% are passing the A to G requirements, so it's 60% that aren't passing them. Okay. So 60 to 70, that's pretty close. I'm sorry, How is High Tech High preparing students to go to college? Well, we have a very unique uh, college program, or high school system. Um, basically, we can't choose our classes here, uh, or the students at my school can't choose their classes, so they are required to pass the A to G requirements. But we're a very unique school, and there's only 400 kids in this school versus Point Loma has 3,000 students, and they get to pick and choose their classes, so. What would you say the student to uh, teacher ratio is in high tech high? It's about one to 25. And in the main school, a public school? Uh, I'm not sure. It could, I think it's 1 to 25. Something like that. I'm just the bell. Don't look at me. <laughs> I'm just making eye contact to be pleasant. <laughs> Objection. It's a lot bigger. Isn't there always the argument that's saying public schools are bigger? Yeah, but they have to have more classes to fit all their students, don't they? Uh, do you know what the student is? Oh, so you know what the student to teacher ratio is in a UC school? I imagine that it's pretty big. What about a community college? Probably pretty big too. <laughs> so you don't have exact numbers for them and you are the college counselor at High Tech High Media Arts. Mm -hmm. I work with high school students, not college students. But aren't you telling them that they can go to these schools? Mm -hmm. I love college. <laughs> So shouldn't you have this information to boost their morale to go and apply for colleges? Usually when students are applying to college, they don't really ask how many students to teachers, what the ratio is. So they come to this school, which is 1 to 25, to all the other bigger classes. What do you, I don't understand what you're asking. Okay, this school... Sorry, I think I'm called. Um, Objection! What is the relevance? Can you explain uh, the relevance? I don't think it's good. Sustain. That's for me. That's yeah, that you need to elaborate oh. on why. That's okay. Important. The student to teacher ratio in high tech high is smaller than it is to public school, right? Mm -hmm. So, going to a UC school is smaller than a community college. So, you are the college counselor, so you should be able to say, go to these schools because they are better because they're smaller to teacher, like this school. Well, the student to teacher ratio, that doesn't have anything to do with the quality of the college, does it? But to us, the point well, we have a better connection with our teacher Randy than say with their English teacher. That's true, but I think. Objection! Are you meeting with the witness? <laughs> badgering? You're badgering on the witness. Badgering. Uh, overrule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think they're arguing back and forth, or do you think there's a question and answer? Oh, going. Oh, never mind. They are. If you yeah. if they're arguing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is. Okay, so sustain. <laughs> sustain, yeah. Sorry. So you can, if you want, you can direct the jury to ignore that bit of arguing or testimony, whatever it was. Okay. That's up to you. Strike the password. Uh, yes. <laughs> Strike the arguing, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you worked at other schools in the past besides high tech? I worked for UC, S, or no, UC, SC, sorry. And what kind of expertise did you learn from that? Well, I was working in the admissions program. And? What were you, like what kind of statistics were you seeing with acceptance rates there? I can't think of off the top of my head because I haven't been working there for a while. 
Uh, but I know that a lot of times students, we kind of have a filter. So students that don't meet A to G requirements, like we were talking about, um, they just automatically get declined. And I know that was a problem. Um, what are the requirements like for community colleges? What do you, what do you mean? Like, in are order to apply? Are, yes. Uh, there are none. There are none at all? Well, you have to graduate from high school. And what are the requirements to, to graduate from high school? Uh, to meet a certain amount of credits. I'm not sure what the amount of credits is. Do we know what the amount of credits is on the prosecution? Actually, hold up, yes. Well, I know the, the credits in each like, has to do requirements. I'm pretty sure it's 15 credits. Mm, Are we pretty sure? Not for the ADP, for high school. Is this the state of California? Yeah, so it should be 15 for high school. Um, how do you feel um, about the accessibility to community colleges? I think it's great and that should definitely be an option, but we should, students should also consider private and public universities as well. But we kind of think of community colleges more of a backup plan. Do you find that this accessibility or the difficulty in accessibility is because of the colleges themselves or because of the economy as a whole? Well, I think that that's an interesting question. Well, I guess you could say that because of the economy, we're having to raise our tuition prices, but it's also on the colleges. So the co um, What kind of solutions do you think the colleges should be offering for the economies and stability? Um, Earlier you were talking about the transfers from um, UCSD and how they are, what were you saying earlier about UCSD, what were you testifying? Oh, uh, that now community college students can't transfer to UCSD. And when was that verified? And I'm not sure. And do we have the evidence available in prosecution about UCSD? UCSD? What? What about UCSD? Oh, yes, we do. Can I see it, please? Oh. Yes. This is actually, this is from the discovery page. So. Uh, what, what link is there? Uh, uh, can you look at the bits? I know I have it, for sure. Um, All right. Uh, you guys have 30 seconds to find your evidence. I just, okay, it's in the discovery page, I swear, that's all I can say. If you go to the UCSD website, it says that they don't admit uh, community Do we have that available? Yeah. yeah. Trial? Right now? It's in the discovery page, I'm sorry. I don't, you gave me 30 seconds. It's in the discovery page. Right? It's in the discovery page. We have given it to you guys. That's all I can say to that. Do you have it available for the trial, currently? <coughs> I don't have it printed. A credible argument right now? Make, make a call here. Testifying that UCSD does not allow transfer students to apply mm -hmm. from community college. They want the evidence. Yeah. You decide. Okay? If then we should allow that testimony if they can't find the evidence. Okay? Oh. Alright, we're going to have to uh, strike that. Okay. How do you feel time. about? Different can you just can you clear up what just happened for the jury and for the lawyers and for everyone? So they said that they um, used. Oh, found it. It's been thirty seconds. <laughs> Big buddy. It's up to you. Decide. You're the judge. We found. We found it. If the judge already struck the argument, so I'm gonna have to object if they. Well, get the you have to let him it's start. All okay. I mean, okay. Sorry, but you did already. Uh, Jesus. Sorry. 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 You may want to clear up what you testified. This, this appears to be the evidence right here. Yeah, you can look at that. Um, Your Honor, are you going to continue to strike the evidence since you already stated that you were? Uh. Oh my God! <laughs> this is terrible. Um. Yes, because they probably should have printed. All right. Thank you. I give this back to you. Yeah.
for that. Um, how do you feel about financial aid and scholarship programs? I think it's great for the students that get it. And how do you put it into effect in your high school as a counselor? Well, I encourage students to apply for financial aid and apply for as many scholarships as they can. Okay. And do you think that these same opportunities are offered at all high schools? I think so, but like I said before, when there's so many students to one college advisor, then it's difficult. Yes. So, for different students that are applying for these several programs for financial aid, scholarships, loans, and grants, do you find that it is a very helpful way? for students to make different things accessible, like money for college? Sure, but like I said, it's for the students that get it. Not everyone gets financial aid. Thank you. And as a college advisor at a charter school, how many students do you um, have per year? I work with the juniors second semester, so that's about 100, and then I work with the seniors first semester, so 200. Do you have them the same semester or different? Well, I work with the seniors the first semester because that's when they're applying. Okay. Thank you. How do you think this differs from other high schools? Well, I think that at public high schools, um, there's like 3,000 kids to one college advisor. So, is there always one college advisor? No, not always, but usually it's uh, very few. How would you determine usually? Do you have evidence to back up? Turn no, but I am working on my doctorate in education. All right, thank you. Prosecution, would you like to read the question? Thank you. again what the TAG program is and what it offers? It's the Transfer Admissions Guarantee Program and what that means is that students that are in community college, after two years of community college, they can transfer to a UC or a CSU school and then graduate from there. And I'd like to re-enter the evidence. Um, I'm going to take Exhibit E. Um, bring the computer up. Okay. Um, to, to report that says it has been cut in certain colleges. Sorry, I was curious. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but a jury also, if you want to see any of the evidence, and especially when you're deliberating, yeah. you can see any of the evidence that you want. So can you please read off the title of that? The title? Yes. UCSD will end admissions guarantee for transfers. Which means that now students that want to go to a UC or CSU school are not allowed to? That's true. Which is what, exactly? What is it? Uh, limiting access to those students in community college. Which <laughs> Um, I guess I can ask you this. Um, how do you think limiting access to students to get good education just like ruins their chance of getting receiving the American dream, achieving it? Like, how is not how are students not being able to get a higher education uh, limiting their chance to achieve the American dream? Well, a lot of times you do need a good education to get a good job. Um, that's what. Uh, potential bosses are looking for is a good education. And you mentioned before how uh, how community colleges can only get associate's degrees. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned that some of them, that uh, what type of jobs can you get with associate's degrees? Um, well, I mean, wait. what type of jobs can you get with an associate's degree? 
What type of jobs can you get with an I, associate's I, degree? I don't understand what you're asking, but I mean, you can apply for any job that you want. That can you, re oh, cool. Typically, what type of job? What type, yeah, but typically, what type of jobs? Because you, you said yourself that associate that you can get an associate's oh, degree well, in the Probably a more low-income job than... Uh, objection? That was a leading question when she gave a statement already about what she had said. Sustain. So you said low income job. What type does that mean? What, what type of uh, jobs are you referring to when you get it? So what type of job can you get with a community college education and degree? Well, I'm not an expert in the job field, but I. Are you familiar with any of those? Like I said, it's probably a low income job, but I'm sure that varies. So I'm presenting uh, evidence. Uh, yeah, I don't know what letter we're on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's of uh, small businesses closing down. So would you say that small businesses or community colleges? Um, when you want to open a small business, where can you go to do that? Like, what type of education would you need? You need a degree in business. Okay, and can you get that at a community college? I think so. Yeah, okay, so would you have to go to um, universities to, to open a small business? No, okay, so what does it say in the evidence? It says California's small business failure rate was 69% higher than the national average. Worst of all the states, the report said. Objection, what is the source of this evidence? CNN money. <laughs> sustained, yeah. Why are you sustaining that? I want to know. You have you can use this one. Well, she said, where, where would it come from? And then I said, I agree. I want to know. And then she said, you said it CNN money. She said it before. Okay. All right. Is it, is that, if you're sustaining that objection, then that means you're not allowing the question or the evidence for some reason. Oh, I thought it. I thought it was just. If you're I want to know where it came okay, from. Okay, you can just ask her, and then you can. Oh, so where it's come from? CNN money. Okay. Okay. So, are you going to allow the questioning to continue? Yes. With this yes. Yes. Can you read uh, what else did it say on that document? What do you where? On small businesses. Can you show me? Yeah, oh, I see. You I that one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So CNN says that report at, one more time, it's 69%. 69% higher than the Objection leading question. You already told her the answer before she answered it. I was asking her what she read. You just said it before she read it. What did she read it? Yeah. Okay, what does it say? 69% higher than the The judge one. never sustained her, like, yeah, continue reading, so. Okay. Your Honor, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry, what was the objection again? <laughs> <laughs> it was a leading question because he was already answering the question for her that was asking her to read. Sustain. So do you want them to restate the question or do you want them to strike it from the record or? Restate the question. Okay. So CNN says what about small businesses in California? California's small business failure rate was 69 percent higher than the national average. Thank you. Oh, really question. Uh, you are dismissed. Thank you. Thank you. Ask it. Which means they're coming through with Okay. Do you have a script somewhere? Yeah, it's on. Okay. Prosecution, do you rest? Do you know with your witnesses? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Defense, would you like to call your first witness? witness? Or do you want to take a break for five minutes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, recess. Thank you.